Hey folks, um, the next two videos we're going to be talking about um, two different ways to keep lists of information on um, in your C++ program. So um, the first way we're going to talk about is kind of the classic way that's been around with us for a very long time um, called arrays. And then the second video we're going to talk about vectors, which is um, sort of a newer way in C++ to keep track of, keep track of lists. So um, arrays, you're going to find them in every single programming language and they, they operate very similarly. Um, what they do is they solve this problem that um, we have is that as we get more complicated programs, we often start making lots and lots of variables that are, that are fundamentally the same. Like here's a bunch of integers that are in a sequence, um, you know, and it'd be great if I could have a nice way to like write parts of my program that like selected like which one of these values to display given some certain conditions without having to write like a million if statements or maybe we don't know how many variables we need. It'd be great to make, um, you know, have some sort of, you know, data structure container that would let us um, keep track of a lot of different things, um, you know, so we could, you know, sort of hold information as we needed it. So, um, and so that's where this, this array came, came along. So um, a little bit of the history on the array um, is that so first, first, how do you how do you make an array? So it looks exactly like another variable. Hey, look, I'm going to make an array of integers, um, and then I'm going to put these little square brackets down, and I'm going to say that hey, there's going to be five um, five things inside my uh, inside my list, and then I can to say like, oh look, the values one, two, three, four, five. Um, have been assigned to that list. And then I can just do, we can do a quick little uh, quick little um, loop here. Um, and then we can kind of get the power of this is that I can say see out my array at spot I, I. And what this lets me do is like, hey, look, I put in the values one, two, three, four, five. And instead of having to write C out A, C out B, C out C, and so on and so forth, I can say, hey, let's go through my list, and and I'm going to go with my counter, and when I get to the location that each one of these values is, I'll print it out. So, um, so you can see there it says one, two, three, four, five. Great. A um, couple of things real quick. You'll notice that I started my counting at zero. Okay, even though this is the first thing in the list, C plus plus like a lot of computer science stuff, loves to begin counting at zero, because that means all the bits are turned off. Um, and so that's that's how we're sort of labeling these boxes. So if we think of our sort of traditional variables being a box, and we gave it a name, okay, an array is, um, you know, sort of like a filing cabinet. And um, here's all the filing folders. There's going to be five folders in it, and each folder has some things inside of it. So. Um, let's say I want to directly access one folder. I could say my array at index two is going to be equal to seven. Okay, so remember this is starting counting at zero. So zero, one, two, this is actually the third thing. And we're going to change this. This three here is what we're expecting to have changed. And there you go. One, two, seven, four, five. Okay. So um, we make arrays any way we want. Um, so I can just, you know, say, um, I don't know, Bob's cats. Okay. Um, you know, maybe he's got them all, all numbered or something. But the nice thing about this is that, say, I can say, oh, look, he's going to have 10 cats. But I don't really know, like, what their qualities are going to be. So I can just leave them like that, and that'll set them to have no value. And honestly, I'm not necessarily going to have um, integers of Bobcat. Um, probably going to have a string with all of Bob's cat's names in them, right? And so if I wanted to, I could start labeling them off, you know, Sam, Tim, Jesse, Aunt Salvador, um, you know, whatever we want. Um, but this will just give them sort of a null value. So if we want to, um, like for instance up here, if we got rid of this with integers, you'll see that, hey, look, it went 0, 0, 7. Oh, whoops, because we um, went here and we actually copied over that third spot again um, in 0, 0. But the, the brackets said, hey, let's make every spot default to 0. So 
Um, so that's really important, the idea of initializing your array. What happens if I don't initialize your array? So let's go back to um, this. Um, what happens if I maybe um, accidentally go too far in my array? Oh no, I've gone 15 spots um, in my array that only has five things. Well, weird stuff starts to happen. Okay, so you can see here, we start running into uninitialized variable territory. So our variables are, they're full of junk. We get all sorts of um, strange behavior. And what you can also get is you can actually get, your program will unexpectedly crash. You'll get um, an error that'll basically say your pro program stopped responding. Um, and so usually you get that when you try to copy a value um, into a place that doesn't exist. So there I tried to um, do this and see how I said I got um, array action. Oop, it's not popping up on the screen, but I got a, a little error message saying array action.exe has stopped working. Um, a problem has caused the program to stop working correctly. So um, you'll get like sort of a crash message if you try to copy values when you're going out of balance, it's saying, hey, I can't do any copying, there's, there's no spot there. So we gotta be a little bit careful um, about what we call out of bounds errors. So what are arrays really great for? They're really great when you know how many things you're gonna be sort of keeping track of, okay? Um, so back in the day, like these, these took up, um, you know, a little bit of memory. Um, back in the day when everybody was really memory conscious um, about their programs, um, we ran into you know this issue of like you don't want to accidentally make an array that's too big. So um, you know, let's say I was going to make a program to um, you know keep track of um, all the addresses that I had. Um, well, I might say, hey, let's make it you know ten thousand big, okay? Um, because man, I I know I'm going to know ten thousand people. Well, back in the day, we cared about that a lot. Just drop the headphone on the keyboard, that's awesome. Um, we worried about that a lot because we don't want to have all of this um, memory set aside for this thing that might not be used, right? I mean, the average person, maybe they only know 512 people, okay? Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna set aside 512 spots. And so old programs, because we were worried about how much memory we're using, we sort of put an upper limit there and then you'd run into problems when you're like, oh, I'm the one person that knows 513 people. And then your program would run into problems because it didn't allocate enough memory to this list. But if I put in 5,000 people and nobody knows 5,000 people, then I set aside all this memory for this variable that I wasn't using. And back in the day when memory was expensive and you know, we had, you know, 2K of it um, instead of, you know, gigs and gigs of it. Um, this meant something to somebody. And they're like, hey, you know, we, we don't want to, um, you know, sacrifice the performance or the resources to give that. So it's not quite as big as an issue today. So you can pre-make um, uh, an array that has a lot of spots. It's just mainly considered bad form, right? Like you make an array the right size for the task that you're doing. Um, if you don't know how big stuff is, that's when we're going to get into vectors. And so the next video is going to talk about vectors and, uh, and how we can access them. Um, just kind of a quick note, what are the, uh, a couple of just like clever ways to use, um, arrays. So, um, one of the ways that often gets used is like what I would call the list feature right? Oh, look, I might have a list of 100 numbers, we're going to start through and I'm going to, you know, ask for input, right? And I might say, hey, I'm going to go all the way up to 100 numbers. And I might say, you know, see out, enter a number. Okay. And then I'm going to see in into my num list at spot I I. And then I might have like, if, um, you know, my num list at spot ii equals negative one, then that might be an indication that I wanted to break the loop, like I'm gonna stop, okay? 
So we've done some programs like this um, where it's very common we use a flag to say, hey, I'm done, and we break out. So this kind of gives you your traditional list. Like I asked for a bunch of numbers. I'm going to um, you know, keep ticking down. So I'd be like, oh, five, seven, eight, negative one. Oops, negative two is okay, negative one. Okay, so I got to negative one and it, it stopped. So now my list would have all the numbers that I had typed in. That's great, it's very popular. Notice that I didn't use all of these extra, um, you know, sort of spots, right? So then I might wanna be keeping track of, oh, um, how many things that I enter, so on and so forth. So it's a little clumsy because you have this all this sort of empty space. Um, and so that's what one of the things that, that vectors are going to help us with later. But the idea, and just in general, that you're going to use like an array as a place to hold a list of numbers. Very popular. The other thing that you might um, might really see is that like maybe I want to have something specific happen when I enter a number like to a part of the list. So I want to sort of use it more like a tally sheet, right? So I can make a temporary integer. Okay, right here. Um, and I could say enter a number and I'm gonna enter in the temp. And then maybe that that temp says, let's do something to that spot in the list. So I could say, ooh, my num list at spot temp, you know, maybe I multiply it by two. Okay, or maybe I add to two since they're all zero to start off with. So this gives us some flexibility. It's like, oh, I want to change locations in the list. So now I'm not caring so much. Like, I don't care that they entered in five and then seven and then five and then four. Like, I'm not keeping a, a list of what has happened. Um, what I really am keeping track of is like, I started off with all zeros and now I'm manipulating those spots. So that sort of lets you do things like checklists and tallies. And, um, you know, a really common one is let's say I want to like sort of encode some information and I can you know put the answers to a bunch of questions in a list right um, so a lot of games when they generate levels you know they have a big list um, and then they put in a zero if it's just like a walking path and they put in a one if it's a grass and they put in a two if it's going to be a mountain you know a three if it's going to be a tree and so then they go back through that list and then they can sort of draw um, you know everything they need to draw just by knowing what was in that list so again like it doesn't just have to be um, you know array is collection of information there's a lot of ways to collect information and how you represent it is going to be really valuable so hopefully that is a useful start um, to your um, array action and uh, we'll talk about vectors in the next uh, packet cheers